All right, so I'm finally ready to do a tour of the new rod wrapping stand. I just got the motor hooked up and took the time to put this blank in here that I'm going to work on next. This is a, a Calstar uh, GF800HX. basically a tuna rod. Um, start at the end here. So this is a, a 200 RPM motor from Amazon, like th 13 bucks. That's what kind of started it all. Uh, the price completely ballooned and escalated from $13, but that's where it started. Uh, attached to the motor, is a little speed pot. This is again pretty cheap stuff off of Amazon. Little forward and reverse stop switch. Um, if you look down the length of the rod here or down the length of the blank everything pretty much runs in line. There's a little bit of a eccentric the drive shaft coming out of the gear motor is eccentric and then it goes into this flexible drive coupling you'll see why I need that in a minute I wasn't planning for that then there's this knurled piece here which is actually part of a slit, slip clutch assembly that's buried inside of this pillow bearing there's a aluminum housing here it's got a female thread on it. This is just a three quarter inch fine thread bolt that I uh, cut the head off of, bored it out, and then trimmed it down and put a little stub piece on the end of it that is holding a spring washer. And then inside of this aluminum shaft or aluminum housing, there's a drive shaft here and a pressed in um, oil impregnated bronze bushing. There's a thrust bush washer on the other side of that. And so the, the spring from this tension screw pushes on that bronze thrust washer and creates the friction to drive this whole thing, yet not, not so much friction that the whole thing can't slip. So you see that the slip clutch is turning and the drive is not. And then this is a, a flex coat um, self-centering chuck. Buy those, uh, about a gazillion places sell them. Uh, anyway, then down the length of it, I've got these uh, adjustable support arms. These have a couple of socket head cap screws inside of that block there that allows you to adjust the height of the assembly and then this hold down arm here has got a couple of screws here you loosen these up and you can move that up and down or capture the rod as it's shown now and then these rollers were just some again off of Amazon I think they were for like uh, 3D printers or something like that. I got a bag of 10 of them for 10 bucks. And then I bought these O-rings from uh, McMaster Car that are the right size to fit those. So four support stands down the length of it. This whole thing is 10 foot long. So I should be able to wrap uh, at least 10 foot, probably even longer if I wanted to without any problem. Um, the aluminum is 80-20. It's just an extrusion product that you can get. There's a place down in Poway that sells it. And then this is the thread carriage. So this has got a couple of rollers, uh, four rollers. Up underneath there, there's a couple of shoulder bolts or a shoulder bolt in each one, and then this is a spacer that puts it at the right, to keep this the right height, to get a gap between the 
80-20 and the um, thread plate or thread carriage plate, this piece of aluminum here. And then there's five spools on there. And for um, thread tension, these are um, rare earth magnets in between. So there's a magnet here and then a magnet here. And so when you push these down, it creates, uh, there's a tension there. And then there's another one. So there's, there's tension there. And then I've got these um, uh, shaft collars. These are five millimeter that when you loosen them, obviously you release the tension. So you can adjust how much tension you want. And you can get probably, I don't know, five, six pounds of tension easily on there. Um, so then uh, thread goes through a common big eye here. And then um, I machined out a, a hole in there, put a sleeve in there <clears throat> that fits this spring. And then made another um, uh, piece that fits on the idea of the spring. And then uh, I kind of press fit that. Um, this is a piece of three millimeter shaft here so that it could take a uh, tip top. And so the tip top is in there and that's what creates uh, enough spring tension to hold the uh, thread in there. And obviously this thing can roll down the entire length of the, of the wrapping stand so you can wrap from butt to tip without having to index the rod at all. I did a couple of test wraps here. That's, I don't know if you can focus on that. That's A, size A, obviously black thread. Wraps really nice and tight, follows the, the leading thread without any problem. Um, and then I've got here a uh, laser level. So you can see, I think you can see it. You can see the laser level line going through the center line of the drive shaft. And I basically set the support arms so that you can't see it on the rod, but if I hold up a piece of paper towel, you can see that um, the center line of the blank is completely level. And might as well turn it on here. Uh, it, it, without uh, being engaged in the slip clutch, the, the um, rotating action, I'm not planning on power wrapping, the rotating action for uh, putting a thread in, let's see if we can get somewhere, here we go, is really good. So very free rolling, uh, no problem to spin the blank, even up at the tip top with just your fingertips. It spins really nice. And now we'll engage the, the chuck. So that's just like a rubber diaphragm that the blank slips into. And now it's engaged. Click it on. Go this way. Now I'll go this way. So now the whole rig is obviously spinning. It's interesting to watch the blank just to see how the blanks are really not um, as perfect as you would think. So you do have to have some compliance in the whole system. That's one of the reasons that flexible uh, drive coupling is in there. It's because you can see the blank will make the um, flip the self-aligning chuck wobble, 
There's also some, the machining in here is not perfect. I think that the, the head of my drive shaft coming out of the slip clutch is not completely perpendicular to the drive shaft. But um, the whole thing stops, no problem. So this would be for when you're applying epoxy and you want to stop and get epoxy down in the guide foot. Here's down at the very tip of the blank. Let's see if I can stop, stop it with the, uh, there. You can see I've got it stopped. Those China markers that I have on there are China marks where for when I measured the actual diameter of the blank, and I'm stopping this with just my fingers at the tip. So the slip clutch works really well. Anyway, excited to get going on this one. I'll keep you updated.